Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In previous videos, I showed you how we could accelerate transformer training and inference using two custom chips from AWS, Tranium and Inferentia. And to do this, I just ran vanilla Python code on EC2 instances. In this video, I'm going to reuse the same example, but instead of using EC2, I will use Amazon SageMaker. First, I will train a model on SageMaker for a training chip, and then I will compile this model for Inferentia. To spice things up, I'll show you two extra things. First, I'll show you how we can reuse the model cache during the training job so that we don't have to recompile the model for Tranium again and again and again. That's a huge time saver. It's a nice little hack. And second, I'll show you how we can compile the model for Inferentia with SageMaker processing, uh, which is a good way to automate those jobs instead of just running them in a notebook or in a different way. Okay, so lots of things to cover. Let's get to work. Let's start with the training notebook. The workflow is very similar to uh, any SageMaker training job. So first we'll uh, upload our data set to S3. Then we're going to configure uh, an estimator. I'll use a, a PyTorch estimator here because we're going to work with a PyTorch model. Then we're going to train the, the model on a Trinium instance. And then we'll look at the artifact. Um, the only twist here is we're going to manage the, the model cache. So when we compile a model for Tranium, uh, the Neuron SDK, which is the AWS SDK for Tranium and Inferentia, will save uh, a compiled version of the model to a local folder so that if we train again, of course, we can skip the compilation step. Uh, unfortunately, on SageMaker, this doesn't work out of the box because we're using containers to train. So anything that's saved locally inside the container is not available for the next training job. So uh, we'll fix that uh, and we'll see how we do this. But that's really the, uh, the only difference. Okay, so let's look at the notebook here. First, of course, we install some dependencies and we download the Yelp review dataset from the Hugging Face Hub. It has over yeah, 600,000 reviews. So that's a big one. We're not going to use all of that to keep things fast. Then I upload that data set to S3. And I can do this because there's an S3 integration in the data sets library. So that's very convenient. OK. So now my data set lives in S3. I can see the training set and the test set. OK. And then I'm going to uh, to initialize my uh, model cache, okay? So what I did here is I just grabbed the cache files from a previous run, okay? And, uh, and I copied them to an S3 location, right? So feel free to do the same. Just grab um, files from a, a previous Trinium run and, and, uh, and copy them to S3, okay? And it should look like this, so whatever prefix you're using in S3. And then the root of the cache should be neuron compile cache and then the actual uh, cache files from the from the neuron SDK. Okay, so that's what I have in S3. Then uh, the usual hyperparameters in a Python dictionary, um, for example, the number of epochs, the batch size, the model we're going to use, the number of labels for the uh, classification job that we're working on here. So five labels, one star to five stars. And how many samples we want from the data set. So here I selected 10,000 just to keep it quick. Okay. The PyTorch estimator uh, with the script. We're going to look at the script in a second. The hyperparameters and then all the infrastructure stuff. And uh, here I'm going to use a Tranium 2x large instance, which has two neuron cores. Okay, nothing really complicated here. Uh, you just need to make sure you enable Torch Distributed because that's what we use to train on those multiple cores. Okay, and you just need to set this thing to true, and that's about it. You can try and enable spot instances. Um, Tranium instances are in pretty high demand, so uh, your mileage may may vary. But I uh, I disabled that stuff here. Okay. So that's the estimator. 
let's look at the training code. And we'll see, this is very familiar because it's, uh, first of all, extremely close to the Trinium code that I used in the Trinium video on EC2. And I guess the only modifications are really um, passing the hyperparameters and uh, uh, different directories here using script mode, which you're certainly familiar with if you use SageMaker or if you've watched my videos, I keep talking about script mode. Um, that's really basically about defining the interface between the SageMaker training container and your code. Okay, and again, what this means is uh, arguments for hyperparameters coming from the Python dictionary and uh, a couple, or in this case, three environment variables to grab the different directories that we're working with. Okay, so the training set, the cache directory, and the output directory for the model, okay? And that's really it. The, the rest of the code is uh, pretty much the same as we can see, loading the data set, tokenizing it, setting up um, the data loader, setting up the training loop, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So nothing fancy, you can read the code unmodified from uh, the, the EC2 video. Um, of course, we need to take care of the cache. So this is how I do it, very simple. I just copy whatever is in that input cache uh, into a local directory in the container. And this is the default cache location for the Neuron SDK, var tmp neuron compile cache. So don't go and change that. Um, and that's about it, okay? And as we'll see in the training log, this is enough to populate the cache so that when we start training, we're gonna find the compiled version of the model and we'll save quite a bit of time by, uh, by skipping compilation, okay? And at the end of the script, of course, I'm saving the model as a PyTorch checkpoint. I'm saving the tokenizer, the model config so that I've got the full, the full package. And I'm also saving the, um, I'm also saving the model cache again. So this will get uh, copied to the model artifact, the model tar JZ file, um, because maybe, you know, originally in the cache, I didn't have a compiled version. So uh, this job just added to the cache. And of course I wanna, you know, I, I don't wanna lose that, right? So that's it. Um, that's how you can manage the cache. It'd be nice if we had, a, I guess, um, a default way to do this in the SageMaker SDK. I created a feature request. I'll put the link if you want to plus one it. Maybe this will happen. But this is really how we can uh, initiate uh, the cache here. Okay, uh, let's read it for the, the code. And then we call train. So we pass the training set. We pass the cache location. Okay, and so that cache channel. Um, ends up being uh, stored as the SM channel cache environment variable, and that's the link, right? Uh, you know, people think that you can only use train and validation as channels, but you can pass anything. You can pass any string, and it becomes uh, an environment variable like this, okay? So that's a little known feature, but it's very useful if you want to pass extra stuff to the, to the script, um, stuff that's not actually a data set. Okay, so did this work? Uh, so if we look, so we can see the two neuron cores have been found. And we can see in the log that immediately um, the code finds the cache, right? With the compiled version. So we don't compile anything, right? You can see we're, uh, we're loading the, uh, the base model here and we're training it immediately, right? And uh, in this case, I think it's saving literally 10 minutes on this training job. So that's, that's a nice little, little tweak, I think. So after um, 1100 something seconds, the job is complete. The model artifact is saved back to S3. We can see it here. And if we copy it to this machine and extract it, we can see, of course, it does have uh, the tokenizer uh, and I guess, Yes, the checkpoint and the config, etc. 
and we also have the the compile cache right so now you could go and extract that cache uh, from the tar file and put it back to that uh, central location why not okay all right so that's the that's the training bit so um, in this notebook we saw how we could train with trainium chips on SageMaker and manage the cache now let's move on to the second notebook where starting from this train checkpoint we're going to uh, compile it for inferentia okay let's do this in the EC2 video, I just ran a Python script to compile the model, and I guess that's fine. You you can do that, um, but you know automation is important and uh, reproducibility is important. So I figured I need to um, you know show you um, I guess a slightly more robust way to do this, and there's a really easy way to run um, I guess batch jobs and any kind of utility jobs on SageMaker. Uh, and it's called SageMaker Processing. And again, I've covered this quite a few times in previous videos, but if, if it's the first time you hear about it, SageMaker Processing is just a way to run uh, batch jobs on uh, managed infrastructure with uh, built-in containers. And I guess you could add your own containers if you wanted. And it supports uh, scikit-learn and Spark. Okay, so here obviously I'm gonna use scikit-learn. Um, this is what I want. So uh, yeah, import some objects grab the location of that artifact okay so the one with the with the checkpoint that we just looked at and now we simply define this sklearn processor object which is just a simple way to say hey grab me that um, built-in scikit-learn container um, it comes with different versions uh, here i'm using 0.20 which is actually the oldest one I tried the other ones, uh, 0.23 and 1.0, and uh, I ran into all kinds of dependency issues. Um, the Neuron CC, which is the compiler in the Neuron SDK, needs to pull in some TensorFlow dependencies and, and some additional things. And I could not get that stuff to work with the newer versions. I suspect this is actually linked to the underlying Python version. Um, because, um, to the best of my knowledge, the Neuron SDK works with uh, Python 3.6 and 3.7, and I'm pretty sure this is what I have <laughs> with this container, and I'm not so sure about the other ones. So anyway, it doesn't matter. We're not actually using anything from Scikit-Learn. Uh, it's just that we we need a, uh, an older Python version, and this one works, and the new one don't. Okay, so that's it. Simple as that. Um, here I do not need any particular instance. Um, I just, it's a, just a, a CPU instance, I guess. It's fine. We don't need a Trainium instance. We don't need an Inferentia instance. We're just compiling, okay? And I guess that's also the benefit of, of separating the, the training and compile and, and deployment steps because you can pick the instance type that works best. So to compile for Trainium, of course, uh, to train on Trainium, we, we, we need a Trainium instance. But to compile for inferentia, we just need a, a vanilla instance. That's what I have here. And then we just run the script. And we'll look at that in a second. The inputs are um, the actual artifact, okay? The checkpoint. I've got some uh, requirements that I need to install. And uh, it's just convenient to install them as a particular input. And uh, I have a deployment script that i want to add to the output as well more on this later okay so three inputs but the most important one is this and one output will which is just the model artifact but this time instead of the the vanilla checkpoint i will have a model compiled for inferentia so here i want to compile for an inf1 6xl instance and those have uh, four inferential chips with four cores so that's a total of 16. Okay, you need to um, you need to be sure about this. Um, otherwise, you'll uh, end up compiling something that doesn't uh, deploy properly. Okay. Fine. Uh, let's look at the compile code, which again is extremely similar to um, um, the, the EC2 video. Of course, the only difference is I have to manage those inputs and outputs. Um, I have to install some dependencies. And then, again, uh, 
grab the arguments. Uh, I added extra parameters if you wanted to change the model or you know, just for extra flexibility, but this is the only one I need here. Then uh, I'm gonna grab the input model artifact, okay, and extract it to get to the checkpoint file. I'm gonna load the checkpoint file, okay, into uh, a hugging face model, okay. So the tokenizer, the config, make sure I've, I have the right number of labels for my classification problem, then build uh, a model for sequence classification from that load the checkpoint into that empty model okay and voila okay so now i've got a proper hugging face model uh, then i need to define a, a sample input uh, so just uh, here in this case a positive review tokenize it transform uh, that uh, tokenized input into um, a tuple of tensors because that's what uh, uh, TorchScript expects for model compilation. So if I pass directly this, it's going to complain about the, the format not being the right one. Okay. And then uh, my favorite line, one line of code to compile the, the original model into an inferential model, right? So passing the model, the sample input, and the number of cores I want to compile for. Okay. Uh, strict equal false are uh, discussed in the previous video. It's just that um, uh, it ignores the fact that the model is a dictionary and, and blah blah blah. Okay, um, you can look it up. Not too meaningful for now. Once it's compiled, I save everything back. Okay, the tokenizer, the config the compiled model this time okay so i changed the name to avoid confusion and then i um create a tar file with all of this adding uh those three things we just saved and the inference script okay and the reason why i'm doing this is because uh, when you want to deploy those models you need to have um uh, because the way we're going to load the model is a little bit uh, different uh, we're going to have an inference script inside the the model artifact okay so here i'm kind of preparing the fact that i'm going to deploy for inferentia on SageMaker. okay if you want to deploy on you know another service or build your own containers etc you don't need this step but uh, for um, for SageMaker, we need to have uh, this inference script here okay um, that's that's the reason why so uh yeah here we go and then so once we've done all of this we see the model loaded here and we see we compile and save everything right so looking at the output of this processing job i can grab the location of the new model artifact and I can again, you know, copy it, extract it, and I can see I've got all the model stuff, okay, and I've got my inference script, right, and potential requirements for that inference script. Again, those things here are only required if you're going to deploy to SageMaker. Right? So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. We'll look at deployment later. Uh, I'm still <laughs> working on it, to be honest. Um, but here we have a couple of really nice notebooks where um, you can easily train on Trainium and optimize for Inferentia, compile for Inferentia in a, in a pretty automated way. Uh, and I guess the next step would be um, to build a SageMaker pipeline from those two, uh, from those two jobs. Uh, this is left as an exercise to the reader. Uh, I've done this already a million times. It's not difficult. Uh, so go and watch the, the pipelines video and uh, you can very quickly assemble those two uh, steps, the training step and the processing step into a pipeline if that's, uh, if that's useful to you. All right, well, that's it uh, for today. Hope this was useful. Uh, you know, reInvent is, uh, you know, a few hours away. I'm sure there's gonna be some fun stuff coming up and I'm sure I will be back very, very soon with more videos. 
And until then, keep rocking.